So I thought the best way to explain the Lambert W function would be with a direct comparison to the natural log, because the natural log is also an inverse function. So for the natural log, we have a function e to the x, and then in order to have our inverse of that function, we just use the natural log. We can show that these are inverses pretty easily because inverses have this property if we take the inverse of the original function, we just get back the input x, and then we can do it the other way as well. We can say if we have the function of the inverse, we just get back the x again. So then we can demonstrate it with what we know about the natural log. We can take our inverse function, which is ln, and we plug in our function e to the x, and we know what this is because we know if this is base e, so we can take this out here and we just have this function x, so we get back the x, so we show that that property works. But then again, we can do it the other way. We can use our f of x, which is e to the x, but in for our x, we're gonna plug ln of x, and again, we have this kind of cancellation, and we get back our x. And we can also look at this from the perspective of the graph if we have our function e to the x, it looks something like this, right at zero, it's one here. And then because it's an inverse function, our ln x is gonna be reflected along this line where y equals x, so it's gonna be like a mirror image here. Excuse my drawing, it's not that great, but I'm gonna do the best we can. So that's pretty bad, but you get the idea that this is reflected along this y equals x line. Sorry, I should get my computer up and then we could do it on Desmos and it would look better, but for now, this is what we got. <laughs> so now with all this in mind, let's look at the Lambert W function and see how closely it resembles this situation. So we start with a function, very similar. Instead of starting with e to the x, we just kind of multiply an x on the front of it and we have this function, x times e to the x. And then we're gonna have our inverse of this function and we're gonna call that, that's gonna be our w of x. So that notation can be considered like really the same idea as this natural log, which is just defined to be the inverse of this exponential function. So then next let's show it has the same properties as what we found here for the natural log. So if we have our Lambert W function, we should be able to put in our f of x and get back x. And this is actually like the most useful property that we have when we're solving equations using the Lambert W. But then also we should have something like this, right? We should be able to do it the other way and take our function and plug the inverses in and get back x as well. So that would mean instead of having our x's here, we're gonna plug in Lambert W here, Lambert W here, and this will give back x as well. So this is also very useful. And then we can take a look at the graph. So here we have our x e um, x e to the x curve that dips below the negative and then grows quickly, right? Because it's an exponential. And then here's our Lambert W function down here. Again, notice we're reflected along this y equals x line. And so then this is our essentially our inverse, but we got a problem because for there to be an inverse, it has to pass the horizontal line test. So the horizontal line test you just can draw just looking at this, our function, this is our f of x. So just trying to draw, if you try, try to draw a horizontal line up here, you're fine, it just goes through at one point. But if you draw your horizontal line here, you notice you hit this curve at two points. The problem with that is, that's, that says that there is no inverse because when we invert it, you'll notice it's not a function because we have two values, like if our, Let's say this is minus uh, half or something, or point, minus 0.1, let's say, we'll have two values. A function can't have two values. So there's a problem with our Lambert W function, but it's actually not a function. So what I've done is I've actually fixed this. What I did was I just kind of chopped it off here at this special value, minus one over E. Okay, and so if we chop that off there, we know now we passed the horizontal test, because we're just saying our function x e to the x, we're defining it from minus one e and values greater. And so then if we do our horizontal line test now, 
we hit at this red line, but I'm saying the red line is something else and we're not considering it. So now we have a function x e to, e to the x, where x is greater than minus one over e, that now passes the horizontal line test. So now we actually have a Lambert W function that is a function. So we'll define this black curve to be our principal branch of the Lambert W function. We'll usually, we'll usually be dealing with this principal branch. If you go on Wolfram Alpha, they denote it with W sub zero. And then occasionally we'll use this other branch in red. This is on Wolfram Alpha W minus one because we, if things get a little complicated if we're in this if we're in this area here where we end up with these two real values. Sorry, I'm trying to clean this this um, I'm trying to clean this graph up because this minus one over e value, this is this is close to this is around minus 0 0.36. That's really useful to know because when we're trying to look at this and we want to find out if we have real solutions or not, we have a few different cases. If we have a positive x value here, we have one real solution because there's only one point that we need to worry about on this curve. The curve's pretty straightforward. And then it's only in this little region here where we have potential for two values. I'm gonna go into this more in other videos because we'll see how that works when we have to find out how many real solutions we have to a given problem. So now let's actually look at this problem, x to the x equals five, and we'll do this, we'll, we'll try to do the same thing we did before, and we'll take ln on both sides. So we'll have ln of x to the x equals ln of five, and we'll bring our x to the front. So we already did this. And then remember, when we're doing the algebra of this, the whole goal, what we want to do that's going to help us simplify is we want to be able to use this. Because if we can get it into something of this form, it doesn't have to be x, it could be like a, some, um, a more complicated expression, but if we can have something e to the something, then we can pull that something out and it's gonna help us simplify the algebra. So I need to get an e in this expression. And what I can do is I can write this x as e to the l on x, just using what we know with our uh, rules of the natural log that these would can't. So this is just the same thing as x. And then we'll have our l on x here equals l on five. And then we notice something important that we have the same thing here and the same thing here. If you wanted, you could call this u or y or whatever, and then you'd have w, u, e to the u, and then that's the same thing as u. But however you want to do it, we can now use the Lambert w function and pull this value out. So then we've applied the Lambert w function on both sides of the equation, and this is going to allow us to pull out just these inputs, so we're gonna be able to pull out ln x. So here on the left side, we'll have just ln x equals w ln five. But then we get our property of the exponential, so we can write x as e to the Lambert w ln five. And then this is a fine answer here, but what we can do is, you remember we had this second uh, property from when I was going over the introduction that we can use, and we can write this in a different form, is if we manipulate this a little bit, like if we divide both sides by our w, we can write this as e, remember w equals x over wx. So that means we can write this as our x, which is ln five over just pattern matching w ln five. And I don't have a preference the only thing, sometimes I like the second one for calculating it, but it really doesn't matter. So we have these two equivalent answers. And then now your question might be, okay, so what is this thing that we just found? Um, we have a calculator to calculate ln5, but how do we calculate Lambert W of ln5 to actually get some kind of numerical answer? Well, there's not a good way on a calculator. I don't know of a calculator that has a Lambert W button. But anyway, if you put this into Wolfram Alpha, you'll get an answer approximately 2.12937. And that kind of makes sense. If you think about it, if you put, if you put this in here, if you know like, like two to the two is four. Now, if you want to say it's three to the three, it's 27. So it's going to be fairly close to two. And that's what we see here. And then the last question we have is, are there any more solutions? Well, if we do look at a graph of this, 
you can it, it does seem you can kind of see that there's just one solution but the other thing is okay we have this Lambert W function which is a multi-value function so there's multiple answers for this piece just our W piece and so we want to know okay is there more real solutions so going back to our graph of the Lambert W function real quick now we know ln5 is approximately 1.6 something it doesn't really matter in this case for what we're trying to do so we want to assess if we put 1.6 into the Lambert W function do we get multiple real solutions? Because we know ln5 is real and that's not gonna change anything. So we wanna really assess this Lambert W function part. So if we look at 1.6, we just have this one solution on the Lambert W function. The case where we're gonna have a second is if we were in this region here, that's where you can get a second solution is if you have something on this red line, this negative one branch. So basically anything greater than zero, we're gonna just have one solution and it's actually pretty straightforward. And then if we had anything like negative beyond minus one over E, anything out here, it's only gonna be complex solutions. We're not gonna have any real solutions here. And so the only tricky place, and it's not really that tricky actually, is between in this region and here, this is from minus one over E. We'll go over another time why it's minus one over E. So when it's between minus one over e and zero, that's when we get these two real solutions. So we, we kind of just, I just do that check. And then if you do that check, you know, okay, we need to look for that second solution. And that second solution is gonna be on this negative one branch that we can also calculate. So I know that's a lot, that's a big introduction. Um, in the next videos coming up, I'll do a lot, bunch of examples. We'll do a lot of problems like this and some different stuff to get a better feel for these problems.